This is Jamie. We'll talk to you guys in a, in a couple of minutes. It's a little late, but we'll start on time. Um, <clears throat> my name is Monica McCoubery. I am the Wildlife Education Specialist for the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. I'm located in the Lincoln office, and I'm going to let my co-host introduce herself. Her name is Jamie. Hi, I'm Jamie Bachman. I'm a wildlife educator um, in the Norfolk office of the Game and Parks Commission. Good to see you all today. All right, so thanks everyone for joining us today. I'm really excited to start this again. If you have done a Science of Series webinar before, thank you for joining us again. I appreciate that. Um, I've had a really fun time doing these and I'm glad I'm able to do them again. And I'm glad to talk about something that is relevant to what's going on right now. So it's cold outside and here in the Lincoln office, it's really windy and it's cold and not a great day to go outside. So we're gonna talk about hibernation today. So. <clears throat> I do have all of you on mute and I will probably leave you all on mute. So if you have a question or a really cool comment or a story about something that we talk about, please go ahead and put it in the chat box down at the very bottom that should say chat. And if you just want to click on it and then you can just type it in. Um, you can do a message to everyone or you can privately message me or Jamie if you have a question as well. So um, feel free to use that and talk to other people, have good discussions while we're talking too. So we'll go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Thank you, Jamie. Yeah, she put here's the chat, everybody. So if you haven't used this feature before, go ahead and do that. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And then hopefully I don't share anything embarrassing here. And I will uh, change it so that it's on the right one. All right, I think everyone should be able to see the big version now and not the notes version. Okay, perfect, thanks Jamie. All right, so we're gonna talk about hibernation today. Um, <clears throat> so when we talk about hibernation, we're also gonna talk about some other survival tactics that um, animals do in the winter time to survive. So if you guys have been looking around your neighborhood or when you drive to work or to school, you might notice that we don't have a ton of animals out right now. We have a few, we have some birds, I see some rabbits, there are some squirrels out there, you might see deer or maybe even a possum or a raccoon, but you probably don't see as many animals as you did when it's warmer outside. So a lot of them might be sleeping, a lot of them might be hunkering down, or even some of them might have migrated to a different spot. So we're going to go ahead and talk about some hibernation and some other things that animals do to survive the winter time. All right, really quick, just wanted everyone to know, um, just make sure that if you do use the chat function that you are talking about um, what we're talking about and top topically what we're talking about. Um, be nice to everybody, um, make sure that your comments are appropriate, that kind of thing. Um, we will remove you if we find that you are not following these rules, but I'm sure everyone will have no problem. All right, so I kind of want to talk about what all these words mean. <clears throat> um, there's a lot of different terms and I wanna make sure that we're all on the same page. So if I say a weird word, you're not like, what is that? I don't know what that means. All right, so what is hibernation? So when we talk about hibernation, it is a long-term state where the body temperature is significantly decreased, your metabolism slows down and the animals almost enter like a coma condition. Um, and one big thing that we have to remember with hibernation is that it takes a lot of time to recover from this. I'm going to tell you a little bit later here a really interesting fact that I learned about doing this, um, and I hope you find it interesting too. But um, when we talk about hibernation as well, it is a behavioral response. So some animals do, some animals do not do this, um, but it depends on the changing seasons. So some animals will hibernate in the summer, some animals hibernate in the winter time. Um, but as the body temperature drops, the heart rate slows down, your breathing slows down, they basically want to use as little energy as possible. They don't want to burn a lot of calories because that means they burn off their fat and then they're going to be hungry in the winter time and they're going to wake up and that's not what they want to do. There's not a lot of food out there, so they want to make sure that they are able to conserve as much of that fat and that energy as they have. 
All right, so with hibernation, there's also another word that some of you might have heard and some of you might not have. It's called torpor. Um, so torpor is very similar to hibernation. It's kind of like an umbrella term that a lot of people use. Um, but basically, it's a little different because it describes a short term period of reduced temperature and reduced breathing and um, your metabolism slowing down. So hibernation is like a long term. Torpor is a little bit shorter term. Um, the very same things kind of happen Happen, but they do it in a shorter amount of time. Um, later on, we'll talk about daily and seasonal. There's two different types of torpor. Um, and a lot of animals, their metabolic rate or how fast they can digest and um, do those bodily functions, it can sometimes drop over 95%, um, which is a lot for some very small animals like bats, for instance. All right, <clears throat> so bromation or bromation um, is used basically the hibernation term that we use to describe for ectotherms or for cold blooded animals. Um, it's basically the same thing, um, except for in like reptiles and amphibians. And that, like I said, ectotherms are cold blooded animals. Um, for bromators or for brumation, this is more likely due to temperature drops rather than a response to not having enough food. Um, for instance, we know that snakes eat mice. A lot of snakes will eat mice. There's usually plenty of mice around. They usually never dwindle, um, but it's mostly just because of the temperatures getting colder and they know that they're not going to be able to survive out in the wild for very much longer. So they need to find a place to go to sleep. Um, some animals, they still remain kind of active during torpor or hibernation. Um, with bromation, it usually kind of ceases. They don't um, try to find a mate. They don't try to eat. They don't even defecate. So um, they usually will find what's called a hibernacula or somewhere kind of like a den that they use to um, sleep for the winter time. It's either in the water. It could be in a hollow tree. It could be underground. It could be in your house. Um, not to scare anybody, but I do know a lot of snakes that love to hibernate or overwinter in sump pumps. So just, just an FYI. All right. And then there's also something called estivation. Um, it's sometimes spelled with an E or an A, um, but this is kind of um, for the animals that live in those really hot, dry environments um, versus the time when they live in really colder environments. So um, this is a lot of different types of animals. It could be a mollusk. It could be an insect, a mammal, a reptile, amphibian. Um, lots of amphibians will actually do this. And basically what they do is they stay in the shade in the cool area until it is um, favorable or good for them to go back outside. But just like hibernation, um, their breathing rate drops, their heart rate drops, their metabolic rate will also drop. And this is all to conserve that energy. So these are all four different topics that are very similar to each other. Um, but when we talk about them today, I want to make sure that you know the difference because there are differences between them. All right. So we'll go ahead and take a pause. Is there any good questions that we've had um, come from the chat or do we just want to keep going? We don't have anything in the chat right now except snakes are cool. I do agree. Whoever put that, I absolutely agree with you. Snakes are very cool. All right, so we're going to kind of break down hibernation. Um, so without within the next few slides here, we're really going to get into like the nitty gritty of what hibernation is and what it does to the animal's body. All right, so I have a question for all of you guys. You can type it in the chat. Do you eat food? I hope the answer is yes. Um, everyone likes food. Everyone can say their favorite food. Mine is probably tacos or pizza. I really, really, really like tacos. Um, we eat to gain energy and to fuel all those processes that are going on within our body. Um, so a lot of the times we eat food because it tastes good or man, I really wish I, I could have a piece of cake or some ice cream right now. Um, but main reason that we eat is to fuel what's going on in our body and to give us some energy. And this works fine for lots of different animals when there's plenty of food around. But what happens when that food starts to become scarce or and how do animals find food in the wintertime to survive? We usually don't have a problem with that. We just go to the grocery store, but like, um, you know, a beaver can't really go to the grocery store. So how, how do they find food in the wintertime? <clears throat> So it's very variable. Hibernation is very variable when it talks about different types of animals. Um, it's more varied than people think. Um, when you learn in school hibernation, a lot of people teach you that bears are ones that hibernate. For animals to truly hibernate, there's very few of them. Um, we'll talk about this all here in a little bit, um, but some animals then up all winter long, some don't. Some animals hibernate in the summer, some hibernate in the winter time. 
some fish um, will even hibernate in this waterproof like mucus ball. Um, they're called lungfish. We'll talk about those. There's a picture of one here if you're interested to know what a lungfish is. Um, and then certain bats and birds also will go through hibernation known as torpor, which we kind of talked about earlier. All right, so how do animals know when it's time to go into hibernation? Or how do they know it, that hibernation is coming or that winter is coming? We usually know because we can tell um, that it's getting colder. The nights are getting a little shorter. There's not as much light at nighttime. These are all the same things that animals notice as well. Um, so different species will enter hibernation during different times or brumation or torpor, um, whatever we're talking about. It's never, it's it's December 13th, everyone needs to go to hibernation right now. It's, it's not like that. Um, hibernation is mostly regulated um, for animals by the temperature. So when they feel that temperature is starting to get a little bit cooler, they know that, that something's coming and that they need to probably prep for the winter time. It can also vary though from year to year. Some years it is really hot all the way up until like Thanksgiving or some years it starts getting cold um, like end of September. So it's also very variable, which can um, kind of delay hibernation and change hibernation in other animals as well. Um, something that they also look for is something called photo period, which is basically how long the day is. So if you remember in October, November, beginning of November, we had to switch the clocks back an hour and it started getting dark at about five o'clock and sometimes a little bit earlier. That is how animals also know that it's time to probably start hibernating for the winter time or start prepping for winter. Uh, same with how trees also know to drop their leaves. Um, it's just that time of day and the temperature and how much light they are getting. All right, but how do they know besides the changing temperature and the light, what else helps them? Um, many species also keep a close eye on how much food they have seen around. Um, if we have a summertime and there's a ton of acorns around, you see them everywhere. But as you notice, it starts getting a little bit later in the season, you start noticing that those acorns are disappearing or that there's not a lot left. Um, animals know this too. Um, so what they use is their internal biological calendar. Um, there's two different types. Um, there's a circannual rhythm. Humans know this too. It's basically just like your internal calendar. All right, it's October. It's probably gonna start getting cold here pretty soon. Um, and then there's also something called your circadian rhythm. So your circadian rhythm is like your daily version, um, knowing that, okay, it's eight o'clock, it's, it's starting to get dark, or it's 7.30 in the morning, the sun's starting to come up. So humans and animals both go through this, and that is something that really helps them figure out hibernation as well. All right, so what do they do to prepare for the winter time? Um, it depends on the animal, um, but all animals will need to prep something for hibernation. Um, some animals prepare a den, Sometimes they will line it with insulation like leaves or mud. Um, sometimes they will collect a bunch of extra food. They'll do that food caching thing, um, like squirrels will do it, chipmunks will do it, even woodpeckers will do it. Um, it requires <clears throat> the animal to find non-perishable foods though. Um, for instance, like if a woodpecker or a squirrel found a chicken nugget and they took it in their den, it probably wouldn't last very long. Um, it was something that would probably go bad really quickly. So they wanna make sure they find food that's gonna last through the winter time. Um, sometimes they will need to briefly wake up and eat. So those are the animals that need to cache that food. Um, some animals don't have to worry about that because they don't wake up all winter long. They sleep the whole winter. Um, some animals will eat a really large amount of food to build up that fat reserve. Um, some animals will do both. They'll eat a lot before winter starts, but they will also cache some of that food or store some of that food for later. Um, if food can't be found, or if for some reason that animal is delayed in starting that winter preparation, that can delay their hibernation. Um, that might not sound like a big deal, even if it's a few days or weeks, but it can really affect that animal. If it's too cold and they can't find food, they might die. Or if they can't get enough food and then store enough food for the winter time, they might die as well. So it is a very uh, temperamental um, process when we talk about hibernation and prepping for that winter time. All right, so when people talk about this hibernation or torpor or brumation, they think it's a lot of just sleeping. It, just like when we go to sleep at night and you just sleep all winter long. It's very different. And this is kind of the science behind what we're talking about here. Um, so sleep, 
when you go to sleep at night and you're fully asleep, your body temperature will go down a little, your breathing rate slows down, your heart rate slows down. But if someone wakes you up or you hear a noise, you can be fully awake within a couple minutes. You might not want to be awake, but you can wake up if you had to. Um, but it's a mental change. Um, sleep is defined by the changes in your brain activity. So even though you're sleeping, your brain is still working, you're still um, digesting food, you're still burning off that glucose and that energy um, in your body to heat up your body. Um, the brain waves in hibernating animals, they closely resemble their wakeful brain wave pattern. So even though they're sleeping, it's like their brain is still awake. Um, their body might not be fully awake, but their brain is. Um, and this is something that I found that was super interesting that I didn't know. When they do wake up after hibernation, if no matter if it's torpor or if it's a deep, deep hibernation, they do exhibit signs of sleep deprivation. Um, and they need lots of sleep to recover from that hibernation. So um, if a, for instance, let's say a groundhog, they're one of those animals that sleep all winter long. When they wake up in the springtime, their physicality, their physicalness and their behavioral changes, it will seem like they are sleep deprived. They will feel like they're sleep deprived, even though they just slept for nine months. Um, so for the next few days, they're gonna kind of need to sleep for a few more days to recover from all that brain wave and that brain movement and their body adjusting to waking up. So I thought that was really neat. Um, I would just think that if you sleep for nine months, you're like ready to go afterwards, but apparently that's not the case. All right, so how is hibernation controlled in the body? It is mainly controlled by your endocrine system. So there's different glands that worry about different things. Um, they basically will change and alter your hormones that are being released um, and they control every other aspect within your body. Uh, so for instance, your thyroid gland, that controls your metabolism and the activity level. Your melatonin, um, sometimes a lot of people will take extra melatonin for them to help sleep. Um, this helps growth of winter hair or your winter coats. So even though they might be in a den all winter long, they still need to maintain a thick coat of fur so that they can keep warm. Um, your pituitary gland, it is working on the fat buildup, your heart rate, your metabolic functions, your breathing rate. This one's really important. And then there's insulin. Um, this is the amount of glucose or that sugar that's needed by the animal. So even though they are sleeping um, and they're resting and their heart rate's low, their temperature is low, all these functions still happen. And these are all the hormones that worry about those different things. All right. So mammals, when we talk about hibernation, mammals are endotherms. That just simply means that all the energy um, and all the stuff going in our body makes energy and it heats up our body. But when they enter hibernation or torpor, they become very similar to cold-blooded animals or what we call ectotherms. So their body temperature will kind of depend on the environment that they find themselves in. Um, so what will happen is when they enter hibernation, their body will lower its body temperature because they need to conserve energy and it's really energy um, costly for them to keep doing all those things. So what will happen is their body temperature will lower and it will kind of depend on the outside or their environmental temperature. There is something called a set point, which is like the very bare minimum that that animal's body temperature can go to before problems start to happen. Um, it's kind of like when you set your thermostat to that point, you don't really want it to get any farther down than that. So this set point is extremely important um, because when the animal reaches that, your metabolism will kick in and burn some fat reserves to bring up your body temperature. If you get below that set point, it could be very dangerous for that animal. They might not wake up and they, they could die. Um, so this fat reserve, when your metabolism kicks in, it generates energy, which then heats up your body. Um, the larger the animal, the higher the set point. So for instance, like a bear and a chipmunk, they're gonna have very, very different set points because one is huge and one is very tiny. Um, if for some reason that that animal's body temperature drops below that set point, it requires a ton of energy to heat that back up, which is not a big deal, but if they burn off all their fat reserves, by December, they still might have three more months to go and they might die because they don't have enough fat to reach for the rest of the winter time. So it's a very, very temperamental process. Um, there's a huge balance point that needs to be hit. 
All right, so some cool facts about hibernation. Um, some of the heart rates can drop as little as two and a half percent um, as set at before your usual level. So if you think about where your heart rate is now, if that dropped two and a half percent, it's probably a big deal for humans. You might wonder if we're still alive. Um, chipmunks, sometimes their heart rates will beat up to 200 miles an hour, um, or sorry, beats per minute. Um, they could lower that all the way down to five beats per minute. That's just them conserving their energy. Um, some of the breathing rates in some animals can drop anywhere from 50 to 100%. And you heard that right. Some animals will stop breathing entirely throughout the time of their, their hibernation or their torpor or whatever they do. Uh, some reptiles will go all winter long without ever breathing. And we'll talk about reptiles here in a little bit. And then many animals are completely unaware of their surroundings. So um, it would be really bad to wake up that animal because like we talked about, if you wake them up, they might not have enough fat reserves to last them for the rest of the winter. So it kind of seems like a joke, don't wake the bear. It's not a joke, don't wake them up. Um, and then their body fat is burned off like we talked about. All right, one question I always get people asking is when they're hibernating and they're sleeping, do they poop? Um, good question. Um, so if animals are eating and burning fat, what happens to the waste? Um, so no fecal matter is produced because nothing is moving through that digestive tract. They're not actively eating anything. However, um, your body is always producing urea, which is that main component of urine, no matter what, if you're sleeping or if you're not doing it. Um, so hibern hibernating animals can actually recycle that urea. Um, for instance, bears, they don't urinate all winter, but instead they have special um, proteins that actually will break down the urea into amino acids, and then they're just cycled back through the body. Um, so that way they don't get dehydrated as well. All right, and there is something called brown fat. So um, regular body fat is gonna be white. Um, when it's burned and broken down, um, you induce your shivering. So if you're outside for a while, you start to notice that you're cold and then your body's gonna start shivering. That's its way of warming itself back up. Um, and that makes it so that your body um, has a special protein in it called the brown fat. So what happens in animals that hibernate, they skip that shivering aspect. Um, so it can quickly be oxidized directly into the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, and it produces heat directly without that shivering process. Um, it's just basically a more efficient way of warming themselves up. And this is called non-shivering thermogenesis. Very fancy word. All right, we'll take a break at that hibernation. That was a lot of information. So um, I hope you found some interesting things. Um, do we have any questions? Uh, it looks like, let's see, um, how often do animals not wake up from hibernation? I looked up on Google and I couldn't find anything. Do you know, Monica? So how often do animals not wake up? Ooh, um, that's a good question. I'm not, I'm not sure actually on that one. That's a good question. What, what, what does uh, survival depend on then? If you recap that. Um, they go into hibernation. So it's just that winter prep. Um, it would just be one of the reasons that they would wake up is just because they don't have that food um, availability or if that set point drops too low. Um, there could be a lot of reasons that they wake up. Um, but as long as they kind of prep for winter, that's a huge, like, not a guarantee, but it's a huge um, good port that they are not going to wake up. Um, here's another, a really good question. Uh, what about wild animals in captivity where they are not very cold? What do they do? Oh, okay. Um, wild animals in captivity. Do you want to read that one again? Um, so what about wild okay. animals in captivity wh where, where they are not very cold? What do they do? So like our box <laughs> turtles or something like that. Yeah. So, um, it can depend. Um, if anyone knows Dennis Ferraro, um, he's the herpetologist, one of the herpetologists for the state, um, university here, he will actually put his animals into kind of a semi human induced hibernation. Um, so he will <clears throat> kind of pretend that the environment that they are in is like um, the sun. So he will actually lower the amount of daylight every single day. About a certain time, he starts reducing the daylight. He also starts reducing temperature after a while. So maybe one degree is a couple degrees every single day um, over a certain span. And then it simulates that um, hibernation. So animals are, even though they're in captivity, they're like, oh, I need to go into hibernation. And then what he will do is he'll basically leave that room to a certain degree 
um, very cold degree so that it seems like they are in hibernation. Um, for instance, some of our box turtles, they don't actually hibernate at all through the year. So they're up and awake all winter long um, and all summer long. So it kind of depends. Um, if animal, if people want to do that, you can do that with even your pet animals, especially reptiles, but you don't have to. So good question. Do you have an example of what normal body temp of an, a mammal may have and how low the temperature drops during hibernation? So that variation? Yeah, um, that's a good question. It depends on the species. So like really small animals have a little bit higher temperature, a little bit larger animals have a little bit different temperature. So it really depends on the species, but we will, I think I have a slide in here that talks about torpor um, and it talks about how fast um, animals can bring and lower their body heat up. One of them was it went all the way from 37 degrees Celsius to seven degrees Celsius. So it's a huge span in there, but it, it just depends on the animal. That's a good question. Um, and like we talked about larger animals have a lower set point and uh, a higher set point and smaller animals have a smaller set point. Good question. And that's all we have in the chat. Awesome. All right, we'll keep trucking then. All right, we'll go talk a little bit about torpor. All right, so torpor, um, like we talked about, it's very similar to hibernation, but it is a um, slower and a smaller time frame. Um, so body temperature, your metabolic rate, your respiration, your heart rate are all lowered within a 24 hour daily cycle. So it's like a very quick hibernation. Um, body temperature only decreases about 10 to 20 degrees Celsius. So it's not a huge drop like hibernation is, but it still does drop to reserve those calories. And then animals respond different, differently to the different stimuli and different to the same stimulus. So it kind of depends on how animals are triggered to go into torpor. Some animals do it for seven to nine hours. Some animals do it for four hours a night. So it kind of just depends on a certain stimulus. Animals will react in a different way. Um, body size is really important though. Um, talking about that lower set point and how fast their metabolic rates. Um, it also depends on how much food that they've intaked as well. All right, so there are two different types of torpor. One is called daily torpor. So animals are usually um, torpor by day and active, and then what we call homeotherm homeothermic by night. Um, so they might be active and up, and then at nighttime when it gets really cold, they might be going into that daily torpor, but then in the morning they wake up like normal. So um, it's characterized by declines in the body temperature and metabolic rates. And, um, but it's not to the extent of hibernation. So it's just a little bit um, easier, but a little bit lower amount of hibernation. Um, most animals on average, they um, go into torpor, daily torpor between seven to nine hours, a um, little bit more, a little bit less maybe, but the elephant shrew, we don't have them in Nebraska, but elephant shrews have been seen to go into daily torpor for 24 hour periods. So it's kind of like a, whoa, that's, that's a lot right there. Um, daily torpor is common in some animals. There is one in Nebraska we'll talk about here in a little bit, um, but they're very common in that Afrotropical Australasia um, region, uh, just because it's not necessarily the temperature that clicks animals to go in a daily torpor, it's more of that um, unpredictable energy resources and not having the food that they normally would. So again, it's different stimulus for different animals and that kind of clicks and triggers their body to go into it or not. All right, and then daily and seasonal. So seasonal is believed to be triggered by the amount of food deprivation. And then it also declines day length and then low environmental temperature. So this one's a little bit more closely related to a true hibernation. Um, recent discovery, um, something in the blood of bears, I couldn't find the exact compound name, um, but it helps prevent the protein from um, basically degrading. So instead they will lose fat and not that muscle mass. Because if you've ever had your arm in a cast or your leg in a cast, you'll notice that you don't use it very often. And then your muscles will kind of atrophy and um, or that muscle mass will decline. Um, that's not what bears want to happen. Um, and when they get out of that seasonal torpor, they wanna make sure that they can raise a family, they can go mate, they can do lots of different things and they can't have that muscle be gone. Um, and then a lot of rodents, um, the maximum periods of the seasonal torpor was anywhere from 12 to 33 days. But then again, it's biology, there's always an exception. 80 days was recorded in a little brown bat. So we have little brown bats in Nebraska, which is kind of neat. 
All right, there are three phases of torpor. There's a rapid entry phase, so they go in it right away. There's a prolonged period, and then there's a relatively rapid arousal period. That means they wake up really quickly. Um, so the rate of entry when they go into torpor is depending on their size. So small animals can go in faster than larger animals. And then body temperatures will drop to that minimum set point level um, depending on the amount of heat production. So this is generally above freezing. Like we talked about earlier, it doesn't drop as fast or as much as it does with hibernation. Torpor kind of stays a little bit above that. All right, so arousal. This is mean, when, when do they wake up? How do they wake up and how do they know when to wake up? Um, so sometimes it occurs very rapidly and all of a sudden the temperature drops. Um, in Nebraska, this is a great example. One day you have an 80 degree temperature, the next day it's snowing. Um, so that rapid body temperature really confuses animals. Um, so what happens is that those animals to wake back up, um, they have to like basically overcompensate something else. They have to burn off a lot of their fat really quick to get up again. Um, in some mammals, when they do wake up, it's not just that they open their eyes and there's butterflies going everywhere, but they could have some skeletal muscle contractions, which is just your shivering, um, and they have a quick heat production. Um, ground squirrels were known to increase their body temperature from um, seven degrees Celsius to 37 degrees Celsius in less than an hour. So for them to heat their body back up that quickly, um, it, it, it has to come with some problems. Um, not saying that the animal is going to die, but it takes them a little bit long to recover from that. All right, so one of the birds that we do have in Nebraska, um, sometimes people ask, do birds go through hibernation or through torpor? Some of them do. Um, one of them that we have in Nebraska, the black capped chickadee, very, very common bird that you see, they will go through a daily torpor and it can last about only a few hours. So especially at night in the wintertime, it gets very cold. They usually go um, into this torpor for four, five, six hours. Um, and what happens is that doesn't seem like a lot, but their body will decrease, their temperature decreases, and they save a significant number of calories um, from being burned off overnight. And so they go through that torpor at night, they wake back up in the morning when it's a little bit warmer, um, they go do their stuff, and then they can enter it again at night. All right, so that was our torpor. Do we have any questions about that? The only one um, was, do you know if hummingbirds go into hibernation? Yeah, um, when I was researching for this, I did see that hummingbirds do. I couldn't tell you much about it, but I know that I saw some information about it. Yes. Good questions. All right, so we're gonna talk a little bit about bromation um, and we are almost done. I have just a few slides left. Um, so we'll keep moving. All right, so when we talk about hibernation in reptiles, amphibians, um, or ectotherms, we really call it bromation or brumation. Um, so when animals go to find some place for them to hibernate, um, instead of a den, the fancy term that we use is called a hibernacula. So hibernaculas could be underground, they could be in the water, they could be inside of rock outcrops, hollow trees, um, your attic, basically somewhere where it's warmer on the inside than it is on the outside. Um, snapping turtles are really neat. Um, they can actually rest at the bottom of a lake or a river because with that fall overturn of the water, it's actually warmer on the bottom than it is on the top. Um, so even though through the ice, you could still see snapping turtles. Um, box turtles, for instance, in Nebraska, they will go to the maximum depth um, all the way down during the coldest period of winter or during their, um, their sleeping time. So what they do is they ensure that it's warmer down there than it is on the outside. And then as it starts getting closer to spring, they will start kind of moving up a little bit closer to the surface because it is getting warmer. Um, snakes, what they will do is they move along these thermal gradients um, in their denning areas to stay um, at the warmest point. So again, they're moving to keep with the heat. Um, this is what reptiles and amphibians do. All right, some of you guys might have seen if you follow Game of Parks on Facebook or Project Wild on Facebook, or if you also do uh, Nebraska Through the Lens, there was a really cool picture um, done by Cody Russell here um, of two snapping turtles in Nebraska that were found underneath the ice. And he asked, how do these animals survive during the winter time? One of the cool things is they use something called cloacal respiration. Very simply put, they are breathing through their butts. 
kind of funny, but um, one of the things they do, so the colder the water, the slower the metabolism is for that turtle. So just like any other animal, they're slowing down, they're not burning as many calories so that they can survive during the winter time. So during this, they need less oxygen. And so then they use less energy because it's cold outside. So when turtles bromate or hibernate, they will use that stored energy and oxygen from the water. And basically what they'll do is they'll push the oxygen across their body in areas with lots of places of blood vessels and their cloaca or their butt is one of them. So they are breathing through their butts during the winter time. That is how they are surviving under this ice. All right, <clears throat> any questions on that? And then I think this is our last bunch. All right, I don't see anything else. All right, so estivation. Um, this, remember, is when animals uh, in Nebraska do this too, um, but a lot of the times it's animals that um, will hibernate or kind of get in out of the hot and dry um, conditions because they're not favorable for them at the moment. All right, so earlier I talked about an animal called a lungfish. We do not have them in Nebraska. Um, we, they have them at the Henry Dorley Zoo, actually. So they're very, very primitive, ancient looking fish. Um, but these guys, they're called lungfish because they still have lungs and they use them to breathe air. So what happens is these guys live in areas that um, are seasonal, um, seasonal temporal pools or some, something like that. And what happens is they're swimming around in here, the water starts to dry up, it starts getting smaller and smaller. And then when that mud starts to be there, something triggers in their body and they're like, I need to go in estivation. I'm not going to survive this because there's not enough water in this area. So what they do is they burrow into the ground and in the mud and they secrete a lot of mucus around their body until it's entirely covered. So this mucus sac will hold in all the moisture for that animal to breathe. And then when the mud dries up, the fish is still able to stay moist and breathe through that mucus tube. Um, one thing that's really neat is they can last like this for up to three years. So if that pool doesn't get any water in three years, and if all of a sudden it rains on that third year, they are able to come back up and come back out of it like nothing. So um, it's very, very cool um, adaptation for this animal. All right, so that's all I have actually for today. Um, it was a little bit shorter, um, but I think a lot of cool information was covered. So, all right, are there any questions or anything like that? I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen here. There we go. All right, and if you guys have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. Um, all right, so someone asked, what do bears do? So a lot of the time, <clears throat> we always heard in school that bears are hibernators. So to be a true hibernator, they have to sleep through that whole winter. There's very few animals that do this. Um, it's usually small mammals, um, like hedgehogs are one, groundhogs are one, ground squirrels are another one. Um, a lot of times bears are gonna go through that seasonal or sometimes even daily torpor. It just kind of depends where their habitat is located. If they're in a very, very cold area, they're used to it. So they may go just through daily torpor. If they're in a kind of a seasonal area, um, where it's warm, cold, they might go through a seasonal torpor. So it just kind of depends where they live and what species it is. Um, someone asked, and I almost put this in here. I didn't know if I had enough time to talk about it. Um, can you talk about frogs and how some of them freeze in the winter time? Uh, so one of the species that we have here in Nebraska is the Cope's gray tree frog, and it will actually freeze like a popsicle during the winter time. Uh, what it will do is it produces um, very similar um, chemical in their body, um, the stuff that you have in your cars so that when you clean your windshield in the wintertime, it doesn't freeze on your windshield. It's a very similar chemical that their body will produce and they can stay like that again for up to three years. Um, so if they're frozen like that, they can still survive and their heart rate lowers, their body temperature lowers, very, very similar things. <clears throat> um, is this session recorded? Uh, yes, it will be. Um, what we will do is we will put it on our Game and Parks Education YouTube channel. Um, maybe one of us can type that in there, but it's just Game and, Nebraska Game and Parks Education YouTube channel. Um, if you just go to YouTube and search Game and Parks Education, it should come up and there should be a couple um, links that say like playlists or channels, videos. 
Um, and then you can just search for this one. Uh, give us maybe by the end of the day tomorrow and it probably should be uploaded for you. Um, someone asked, do lungfish have actual lungs? Yes, they do. Um, they have real lungs that they use to breathe and they that's kind of why they make them like a weird um, um, primitive fish. Sorry, I couldn't think of the word. What happens to toads? So toads are one of those animals that will um, kind of like the box turtle, they'll burrow in, they'll find somewhere. Um, some animals though, they, um, not toads, but some animals like insects, they actually die during the winter and then they over hibernate as larva or they hibernate as um, over winter as adults or caterpillars, it kind of depends on the species. <coughs> All right. Well, I hope you guys all enjoyed this. Um, next week, we will be talking about uh, body coverings. So different animals with different body coverings. We'll talk about scales. We'll talk about feathers. We'll talk about um, different types of scales, um, hair, lots of cool stuff. So um, be sure to join us next Thursday, same time, 3 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, there is a different link. So if you are interested, um, I think we can probably, um, I can, uh, there you go, there's that. <clears throat> and then um, we, what we can do is you can go to our Nebraska Game and Parks Facebook page um, or the Nebraska Project Wild Facebook page and find the event and use that on the registration as well. So um, hopefully everyone comes next week as well because we'll have another good session of the science of. Okay. All right. Thank you. I think that's it. So thank you everyone for coming today. I really appreciate it. We'll hopefully see you next week, same time. Thank you. Peace everyone. Thank you.